If I said I could upgrade your camera to produce sharper, more detailed images with less noise and distortion, would you be interested? Well, that seems to be what DxO is offering with its Pure Raw software. Hello, I'm Robin Worley and welcome to Lenscraft. Today I have a beta copy of the new DxO Pure Raw 2, which is released on the 16th of March 2022. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the software, walking you through the improvements and sharing my thoughts about the claim quality. But before we look at the new software, we need a quick look at the old version of Pure Raw to appreciate these improvements. As you watch this, remember that the idea is that you use Pure Raw as a raw preprocessor. It's aimed mainly at Lightroom users, although you can use it with any software that can process a DNG file. With that in mind, the first issue was that you couldn't launch Pure Raw from inside of Lightroom. What you needed to do was open the software first. You would then select the RAW files that you might want to process. I have a batch of sample RAW files in a folder that we can use for this. When I add them, you can see the RAW file thumbnails. Six of the files though are from my Fuji X-T3 which isn't a supported camera, and so we see this warning message. I'll pick a RAW file from my Panasonic G9 and one from the Nikon D800, but I'll deselect the rest. I can then click the Process Photos button. Don't worry about the options in dialog for now, we'll go through those later in the video. I can though see an estimated processing time for the two files, which is 44 seconds. Then I'll click the process button to start the raw file processing. When the processing is complete, I can either view the results or use the export option to export the images to my software. In this case, I want to export the process files to Adobe Lightroom Classic. I'm then switched into Lightroom, where I can import the processed DNG files to my Lightroom catalog. Now I have the DNG files alongside my original RAW files. The most impressive thing about Pure RAW, including the old version of the software, is the image quality, but we'll look at that later in this video. Whilst it's still possible to use the new version of Pure RAW in the same way, there are two more extremely useful options. The first of these is to process the RAW file from my Finder window. If you're using a Windows PC, you can do the same thing but with your File Explorer. Before I can demonstrate this on my Mac though, there's an extra step I need to take after installation, which is to activate the Pure RAW Finder extension in the Mac System Preferences. After opening the System Preferences dialog, I can choose the Extension option. Then, in the Added Extensions section, I need to find the DxO Pure Raw 2 option. This is where you'll see the Finder Extension option, which you can click to turn on and off. The option needs to be ticked for the new Pure Raw feature to be available. Now let me show you what happens when I right-click on a RAW file. In the pop-up menu, you can see there are three new Pure Raw Quick Actions at the bottom of the menu. These give me the options to process the RAW file using my last Pure RAW settings, or I can choose to process the RAW file to either a DNG or JPEG format. Let's use the DNG option where I can choose the conversion method. I'm going to use Deep Prime for this conversion. We then see a progress bar, and after the processing completes, a message is displayed. Now we have a new DXO folder containing the converted DNG file. This is a great feature for someone who wants to convert a batch of RAW files before importing to their photo library, but I'm sure there are other uses as well. Now I did run into a problem that I want to mention. When I tried to use this feature with files on an external hard drive, the pure RAW menu items weren't available. I have been in touch with DxO, and they are aware of this and aim to have a fix available before release. Remember, I'm using a beta version of the software for this review. Now let's look at another new workflow. The second new workflow in Pure R2 comes by way of a new Lightroom plugin. This allows us to select and process RAW files from within Lightroom. What I like about this is the way that Pure RAW integrates so we don't need to leave Lightroom. Let me show you an example. I can select the file or files I want to process in the Lightroom library module. Then in the file menu, I select Plugin Extras, followed by the option to process with DxO Pure Raw 2. This launches the Pure Raw 2 dialog, where I can select my processing options. At the top, we have the raw processing method. This is what determines the demosaicing of the raw file, as well as applying noise reduction to the image. The three options are HQ, 
Prime and Deep Prime, but to be honest, I can't see any reason not to use Deep Prime with everything. This will produce superb results in terms of image quality. Below this, we have the option for global lens sharpening and lens distortion correction. You can turn these on and off independently of each other. I know some people find the global lens sharpening a little bit strong, but personally I like to apply both settings with all my files. Now we come down to the format option where we can choose to save the processed image as either a JPEG or a DNG file. I always use the DNG option because I want to process the image further in Lightroom and the DNG format preserves the image quality better. Finally, we can select where to output the new file to. For this example, we'll use the option to put the file in a DXO folder in the same location as the original RAW file. This, by the way, is the same dialog that you see if you open and process images directly in the Pure RAW 2 application. When I click the process button, you can see a progress bar followed by a message when the processing completes. I also want to stress that the RAW file remains unchanged by this processing. We've simply created a new DNG file, although you probably won't see it immediately. For that to happen, we first need a Lightroom to synchronize the DXO folder containing the new image. This is the same approach used by DXO Photo Lab 5, and I seem to experience the same delay here that I sometimes see when using the Photo Lab integration. This appears to be down to Lightroom rather than being a DXO problem, but you should be aware of it. Sometimes you think nothing has happened when in reality Lightroom just needs to catch up. After the folder synchronizes, you'll see a new collection inside the DXO Pure Raw 2 collection set. If I switch to viewing the sample RAW file folder, you can see the DXO subfolder with the new DNG file inside it. The next improvement to mention in Pure Raw 2 is the speed of processing for Deep Prime. DXO Photo Lab Elite users have already benefited from speed improvements, so it's no surprise the improvements make their way into Pure Raw 2. Previously, I tested the speed claims for Photolab 5 in my launch review video, but I only saw marginal performance improvements. That's probably because my Mac computer is old and uses the Intel architecture. Because of this, I wasn't expecting to see any noticeable improvement in Pure Raw 2. With the old version of Pure Raw, processing a Nikon D800 RAW file takes me around 28 seconds. I also tested some of my Panasonic G9 RAW files, which take around 16 seconds. Testing the same files again in Pure RAW 2, the G9 RAW file processing time fell to 15 seconds and sometimes faster, and the D800 files dropped to around 24 seconds. Given I'm using a Mac with the old architecture, I'm quite surprised by this improvement. If your computer is using the new Apple M1 chip, you should see better speed improvements than I did. DxO claims that Deep Prime can run up to four times faster on the new silicon architecture and that Windows users can expect to see up to one and a half times better performance. Do remember that this performance improvement is to Deep Prime and that there's more processing going on than just that. Having said that, and wearing my real-world practical hat, DxO Pure Raw is fast anyway when it comes to total processing time. And out of interest, processing an Xtrans RAW file from my Fuji takes only 19 seconds, which brings us neatly on to the next improvement in DxO Pure RAW 2. For a long time, Fuji users with cameras based on Xtrans sensors couldn't benefit from DxO processing. When I first moved to the Fuji system, I processed my images in Lightroom and was extremely disappointed by the poor quality. After a lot of testing, I eventually switched to Capture One solely to process my Fuji RAW files. Then, in October last year, DxO launched Photolab 5 with beta support for the Xtrans RAW file. Since then, I've been using Photolab to process my Fuji RAW files and the results are excellent. Now, Pure RAW 2 also supports Fuji Xtrans RAW files and the results are equally good, which brings us nicely onto the topic of image quality. The idea behind DxO Pure RAW is by turning over part of your RAW processing to it, you achieve better results than by only using, say, Lightroom. Whether or not this is worth doing depends how much you value image quality. Let's take an example RAW file that I shot using the Panasonic G9. It's a little underexposed, so let's correct that by increasing the exposure slider. I'll also pull back the highlights and open the shadows. 
Now let's go back to the library module and I'll copy my develop settings. I can then paste the settings to the DNG file produced by PureRaw. With the same settings applied to both versions of the image, let's look more closely at the results. To do this I've taken both images into Photoshop and have them as separate layers in the same document. The first thing I want you to notice is the distortion correction. The image from the Pure Raw DNG file has much better correction and I can even still see some barrel distortion in the Lightroom image. But there's something else that's important. Watch the corners of the image when I turn the Pure Raw layer off and on. You can see that the Lightroom version seems to crop the image and we're missing the edges of the frame. That's because most RAW converters tend to stretch and crop RAW files when correcting lens distortion, but Pure RAW doesn't. Instead, we see the full frame, which helps to maintain the wide angle effect. What's the point in spending lots of money on a super wide angle lens if your RAW converter then throws away part of the image? Now, let's look at the center of the frame and zoom into 200%. When I turn off the Pure Raw layer, you can see that it's noticeably sharper than the Lightroom version, and it has better detail. That's despite me sharpening the Lightroom image. The other difference we can see is the level of noise in the shadows in the Lightroom version. So, the Pure Raw image shows better lens correction, has less noise, and it's sharper, and it's the same story with all the RAW files I've tested. Here's the example of the Fuji RAW file from earlier converted with Pure RAW and Lightroom. And here's another Fuji RAW file. The improvement in image quality when using Pure RAW first is noticeable. But having compared the results from Pure RAW 2 with the old version of Pure RAW, I don't believe there is any improvement in image quality. The improvements in the new version are to the workflows and that it can now process Fuji Xtrans files. So what does this cost? Well, if you're new to Pure Raw, the price is £115, or $129, and it's the same price in Euros. Existing users can upgrade for £69, or $79, and again the same in Euros. Initially I thought this was a little expensive, but then I thought about it. The quality improvements I'm seeing across all my Raw files make them look like they were shot on more expensive and better lenses, the new plugin integration with Lightroom is also great, making it very easy to process and pre-process all of my RAW files. And possibly most important is that it's made photography more fun. I don't spend time worrying about ISO settings and recovering clean shadow detail. Put in those terms, this now seems like a better deal. If someone offered to modify my camera for £115 so that I was guaranteed to produce noticeably sharper, more detailed images with less noise, I would think it was a bargain. Pure RAW is an excellent accessory that I think all Lightroom and Adobe Camera RAW users should consider. But, having said that, I won't be buying DxO Pure RAW. That's because I already own DxO Photo Lab. If you're a DxO Photo Lab user, you should watch this video next. It explains how you can achieve the same excellent results as you would with using DxO Pure Raw. Thanks for watching today's video, and I hope to see you again in the future.